This will be a quick video on using the Flux Context model in Krita AI Diffusion. Flux Context is an image editing model. In my previous two videos, I showed multiple ways of using this model. While the interfaces shown may differ, each video highlights unique use cases that can help you better understand the model's versatility and potential. I will begin with showcasing two of the major disadvantages of this model. I have adjusted the canvas to a size of 1024 pixels, which is suitable for the Flux models. These are the built-in style presets using different AI models. In the configuration, I can access and modify this style preset. In this video, I will be using these presets for Flux models. I have selected the original Flux preset, and then clicking this gives me a copy of the same preset. I will name this copy as context for the Flux context model. Below is the configuration for the context model. The VAE file needed here is missing on my computer. These are the links to the files necessary to run the context model. Links will be shared in the video's description. This is the Flux context model for a consumer grade graphic card. The model size is around 24 gigabytes. You can download this model if you have a graphics card with the same memory size. In this video, I will be using this FP8 model, ideal for most users due to its smaller size of 12 gigabytes. You can try using this model even on an 8 gigabyte card if you have enough system RAM to manage. However, it will increase the image generation time. I will download this and save it inside Krita, then the server folder inside Comfy UI, then Models, and then into the Diffusion Models folder. The larger model we saw earlier can also be saved in the same folder. Next is the clip file and the encoder. If you are using the Flux model in Krita, then this file must be present on your computer. I will download the clip L file and save it inside the models and then in the text encoder folder. Then we need one of these two files, and it goes in the same text encoder folder. The FP16 file above should also work, but it is mostly paired with the larger 24 gigabyte model we saw earlier. Note that choosing a smaller file works, but at the cost of quality and the way the prompt is understood by this model. The 24 gigabyte model can also be paired with a smaller FP8 encoder if you are having a low memory error. The last file is the V. You may have it already if you are using the Flux model to generate images. The file can be saved inside the models, then the VAE folder. Back to Krita, in the configuration, click the refresh icon, and then the context FP8 file downloaded should be visible. You may encounter a yellow exclamation mark here, with a message something like, you do not have the workload or some files are missing. Restarting Krita should work for you. In the models configuration, select the VAE, and here you can select the context. This style prompt may interfere when using an editing model. My prompt will be interpolated in this text, which may change the meaning of the final prompt. It's better to keep it empty. Next in the quality preset, the sampler and scheduler are correct, and this guidance scale should be at 1. Click OK to save the new preset. Be cautious with this new Excel model. It may be ready to surprise you even without a prompt. Select the new preset created for the context model. I downloaded a few image generation models to create a base image, and I will be using the same to edit with a context model. You can check out this video if you do not know about the Flux GGUF models for image generation. I generated this painting of a dog using the image generation model. Click apply to use the image further. Then I selected the preset made for the context model and wrote a prompt for turning the image into a claymation style. And the image generated looks made of clay. The background behind the dog has also been captured in the clay style image. I will not click apply on the new image. I will continue with the base image. The painting of a dog. My prompt is to create an ultra-realistic image with a street background. This is one of the two disadvantages I wanted to point out. The model is good at manipulating the subject and the surroundings. 
but it does not understand the logic behind the actual size of a dog in comparison to a car. The second disadvantage is that the texture never looks realistic. But this problem with realism may get solved after a few months by fine-tuning models in LORAS. I tried a few times, but it never looked realistic. Changing the environment, like adding snow, looks good though. I generated an image of a woman using the Flux image generation model, and my prompt to the editing models was to zoom in on the woman's face, create a high-definition close-up shot. I got a decent result, but the face is looking towards the viewer. Also, this model does change the subject to some extent if you do not specify not to do so in the prompt. In my case, for some reason, the face had changed completely. One can easily identify that this is generated using the Flux model. This chin is screaming its origin as the Flux model. You can achieve something similar by describing, zooming in on the woman, looking on the left, retaining her facial features. A red lipstick would make her look good, so I asked for it. But now, by her expression, I don't think she liked the lipstick. I mentioned not to change the position of her lips. And then the result was acceptable. Next, I tried to manipulate it further with a prompt to put her finger on her lips. It looked fine. I will try generating a new base image and see if the expression works. Facial expression works if you describe the mood with words like angry, happy, and if the person is in a certain mood. The skin became too sharp but you can try again with the same base image. It should work. This image was given by a fashion artist in the comments, and I was super busy, somehow managed to forget. I got back into Krita and found this image in my to-do list. The oil paint style brought the subject to life. This is way better than line art and scribble I used previously. My prompt was to color the sketch with a sense of a fashion artist. And I got this images. The combination of red and black in the center looks the best of all. Let's try using the GGUF models for a system with a memory size lower than 12 gigabytes. These links will be shared in the video's description. And these are the GGUF models. Starting from 4 gigabyte in size to 12 gigabyte. I will download these two models and some from above for testing. Save it inside the models and then in the UNET folder. These are the encoders for the GGUF models. However, I tried using them while testing and they did not work. So I will be using the same text encoders downloaded before. I will create a new style preset for the GGUF models by making a copy of this context preset. Or I can use the built-in flux preset. Duplicate it and name it as you like. I will type Q4, which is relevant to the model I will be selecting. In the checkpoint settings, select the architecture as context and the VAE file, which was downloaded earlier. In the below quality preset, change the guidance scale to 1, the rest should be correct. Click OK to save. I took a prompt from GPT and generated an image of the text. I will select the Q6 model which is around nine gigabytes. And I will try changing this text. My prompt will be, change the text to the GGUF model works. Click edit to process. The Q6 model works. The only miss was the color of this word. Originally it was orange, but now it is pink. In comparison, if I use the Q8 model, the Q8 model keeps the color consistent. I tried the smaller Q4 model, which is around 6 gigabytes, and surprisingly, it gave a better result. The background color has been changed, which I never asked for, but to me, this looks better than what I had previously. Preferences are subjective, but this Q4 has given some unique results multiple times when I was preparing this video. I then tried with the Q3 model, which is around 5 gigabytes. The result is good, the color was not changed, and the text edited is correct. The Q3 and Q4 are the best editing models for the smaller graphic cards. If anyone tries using this on a 4GB card, then please share your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to building a community where we can share knowledge.
I changed the canvas to a size matching the image of a watch. My prompt was to add a color grade and light the photo for commercial photography. I will process this with the Q3 model. And the product looks good. I do not see any changes in the product image. If compared with a larger Q8 model. Even this looks fine to me, but the result by Q3 looks better. What do you think? Next, I tried with the FP8 model. And there is not much of a difference. You may find Q8 GGUF to be better than the FP8 model. If you have a system with an 8 gigabyte card, I think this model should work. Let us know in the comments if it works on an 8 gigabyte card. I tried getting an image of the product from a different angle, and the product had changed. The detail looks similar, but the watch now looks more expensive. This looks a bit cheap in comparison to this image by the FP8 model. Even this image looks good. I tried the watch looking upwards. This editing model works well for product related tasks. If your work involves editing product images, I would like to hear your thoughts. What challenges do you face that you think AI could help solve? I tried changing the color of the dial and it changed accurately without any problem. I then tried adding a black background and smoke around the watch. What do you think about this image? Even the smaller Q4 model is capable of making such edits. The Q6 model gave an icy explosion. I should have set about a water droplet on the watch instead of a wet watch. Next, I will show you how to use two images. This will be a quick walkthrough. While testing, I found this a bit complicated, so I have to make a separate video on it. Let me know if there is anyone interested in the topic. So once you are done with adding the second image, click this to add a control layer. Keep this as a reference because I want the AI to take reference from the tattoo layer. My prompt is to make a tattoo on her chest. You can also hide this reference layer before you click the edit button. In my test, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. The tattoo looks smeared in some places. Also, the skin looks different. In this image, it looks like the tattoo artist has just finished his work. I made this capybara using the image generation model and then generated an image of a hat. The image model gave me multiple hats because I have a longer canvas to generate. You should always keep the aspect ratio 1 to 1 with a 1024 pixel image for best results. Here, instead of cropping, I thought of placing one hat like this to have it on a capybara. My prompt was the chubby capybara wearing a hat. I got the image of a hat, but it did not work. The hat I wanted was of a different color. It did not work because the reference was taken from the entire image layer. I tried a couple of times by positioning the layer, but it gave a brown hat even after describing not to change the color. The cropped image should work. And it worked. The hat looks similar, but the capybara got changed. I specified not to change the capybara and the hat. Then I got this result which matches the capybara from the base image. Let's try using a LoRa. Apply this filter in Civit AI's model page. There aren't many LoRa for context yet, but there will be in a few months. I tried this, place it LoRa and downloaded the file. I saved it inside the models and the LoRa folder. Then in the configuration, click the add button, and then you should get these input fields. Select the LoRa. Make sure this LoRa is switched on and then click OK to save the style preset with the LoRa. I tried generating the same tattoo and it was just a hit or miss kind of generation. I then tried giving a more complex design. The subject is a bit smaller. As I said, sometimes this works and some results are bad. I do not like this result. I was not convinced whether the LoRa used was functioning or not. 
So I tried this Laura. I can add the second Laura in the same style preset by adding one more row. Select the Laura file and disable the previous Laura. Click OK to save, and now the new Laura should be used. The medieval manuscript Laura is not for the tattoo-like use cases. I generated this image for testing the medieval Laura with the FP8 model. Inside the configuration, I have deleted the previous Laura, copy the Laura trigger words from Civit AI, and here you can place the trigger words. Now I do not have to give trigger words in the prompt box, and I clicked edit with the FP8 model. The Laura works, but the trigger words in the configuration could be a bad idea. The prompts we type are appended to the trigger words from the configuration, which may make the final prompt something else. When using an edit model, I suggest keeping the trigger words in the prompt box. At last, I will be trying the Laura with a GGUF model. I have kept the Laura trigger words in the prompt box and selected the Q6 context model. I have not added Laura to the configuration yet. Based on the trigger words and Q6 models, this is the result. Now I will add the Laura and click OK to save. Click Edit and let's check the result. The result clearly shows the Laura effect. In a couple of months, we should see more Laura options in Civit AI. Hope the video was helpful. Do check out these videos in the description. They may give you some more ideas. There are still a few methods pending in the context model. I think two more videos will cover those topics.